how did the Salaf, the great Muslims of, our, of the past periods, how did they deal with those people of innovation? How did they deal with people of innovation? Number one, we have to distinguish what they meant when they said Ahlu Bid'ah and Ahlu Ahwa. When you read in the books of the Salaf, when they said Ahlu Bid'ah, the people of innovations, Ahlu Ahwa, the people of desires, what did they mean? Did they mean someone whose usul, whose foundations are of Ahlu Sunnah and he fell into a Bid'ah? No. Did they mean someone who just sits with Ahlu Bid'ah but his Aqeedah is right? No. When they said Ahlu Bid'ah, they meant the major innovations and the roots of all innovations in Islam are for al qadariya those who deviate in the matters of the Qadr, uh, the decree of Allah, the Murji'ah, those who, decree, uh, who deviate in the matters of Iman, the Rafid wa Shia, those who cast the Sahaba and do all kinds of other Bid'as, uh, and the Jahmiyyah, and those who came from them, the philosophers basically, those who deviate in the matters of Allah's names and attributes. Those are the roots of all Bid'ah. That is what they meant when they said Ahlu Bid'ah, that's what they meant. But today we have come, or some of us, and we have expanded that circle to mean even someone who barely fell into an innovation. He does not call to that innovation. Maybe in fact he does not even know, he does not even know that it's an innovation. We don't deal with those brothers or sisters like how we deal with people whose foundations are built on innovations. Someone who says, I am Shia Rafidah. Someone who says, I am Ash'ari Maturidi Mu'tazili. Someone who says, I am from the Khawarij am Takfiri. Someone who says, I don't believe in Qadr. People who use their foundations and they walk the religion around that. Those people, you don't deal with them in the same way you deal with someone who is usul, whose foundations, they are generally the usul of Ahlul Sunnah, the way of the Salaf, the way of Ahlul Hadith. But he happened to fall into a mistake in one chapter or one issue. You don't deal with him the way you deal with them. This is a point I want us to understand. You don't deal with students of knowledge and people of knowledge eh, who fell into innovations the same way you deal with Someone who's army, someone who's just a general folk Muslim, he never studied Islam. Is that even logical? You're going to deal with this kind of two kind of people, same? Is that logical? I'm asking you, Ikhwan. It's not logical. You don't do that, but you see people there doing that. You can't do that. You bring problems. You know? And if you look at, at the life and the dealings of the great Imams of this Ummah, you'll understand. You'll understand how they dealt with people who fell into a mistake in one particular chapter and people whose foundations were built on innovations. You understand? This is completely different. They dealt with these ones differently than these ones. So even now we are talking about the people who their foundations are foundations of innovations. They were never built on the Sunnah and they call to those foundations. How do you deal with those people? The way Imam Ahmad, when you read his words, or Imam al-Sha'bi, or Shu'b ibn al-Hajjaj, or al-Nasai, the way they dealt with those people, even we can come to the eras of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and ibn Qayyim, the way they dealt with Ahlul Bid'ah is not the same way we deal with Ahlul Bid'ah today. Only for one reason, because times have changed. The balances have shifted. You understand? The balances have shifted. So there has to be a lot of hikmah, a lot of wisdom. So you read in the books of Aqidah sometimes, it says we do not give salam to Ahlul Bid'ah. And you see some of those young people, you know, they have the hamas of the deen and this is the sunnah. This is the manhaj of the salaf. They do that. And who they do it on? Like we said, people who it's not even established that they are people of innovation. It's just people who happen to fall into a mistake. Or they don't know any better. Instead of going them to give them advice, which is their obligation, by the way, it's a must, as another Muslim, a dirun nasiha. No, right away they label them an innovator. 
Right away, they don't even give them salam. And the rights of a Muslim to another Muslim, they're all dropped. In fact, it reaches the point, some of them in the UK, uh, they saw some people from the Ikhwan, Ikhwan Muslim, which is a group which know it's built on deviant principles. But they saw them, they were being attacked by a group of non-Muslims attacking these people, or they say from the Ikhwan, who they had a da'wah table. And these brothers who sitting, still standing there calling themselves that they are the Ahl Sunnah, they are following the law of the Salaf, they just watch and say, we don't help people like this. How? These people are Muslims, and every Muslim deserves your wala, deserves your allegiance and your loyalty to the, the least of it. You know? But that is what I'm telling you. It reached the level where they're telling people, don't go bury your own father. Why? Because your father was not a Salafi. Was he Muslim or not? Yes, you can say my father was wrong, but it does not reach to the point where you cut off relationships, where you cut off uh, the rights of another Muslim. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Muslim man or woman who has believed, yet his father or her father are calling them to kufr. Allah says, وَإِنْ جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِهِمَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٌ فَلَا تُتِعْهُمَا وَصُحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا If your two parents, they fight so hard to call you back to kufr, don't obey them. Even though they are your parents, they are the ones you deserve most of everything from you. Don't obey them. But وَصُحِبْهُمَا فِي الدُّنْيَا مَعْرُوفًا You should treat them in the worldly affairs in good. You are non-Muslim parents. What about your Muslim parents? What about your Muslim parents? You're supposed to have that basic relationship, that basic service you have to give to your father and your mother. So, Ikhwani, my point is, how do we deal with the innovators? It requires a lot of hikmah. And the problem we have is that people don't have knowledge. They want to read only those lines. You should read how the Imams of Ahl Sunnah dealt with the people of innovations. There's times, yes, to show enmity, there's times that enmity has to be dropped for a bit because of the basic alliance a Muslim has to another Muslim. So when the, we'll give an example of someone who none of us can differ on, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. When the Mongols were attacking Sham, uh, after they had done what they had done to Iraq, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah who was being persecuted by the leader of the time, and they were almost most of the scholars were fighting against him, because their aqidah was different. He is the one who called everybody for jihad to fight against those Mongols. And he led them, and from them were the Ash'aris, or the Maturidis, and all other groups. This is not the time for us to Say, oh, he's Ahl Bid'ah. No, this is the time we have a common enemy. This is a kafir uh, invasion. They're going to attack the Muslim land. We as Muslims, we have to have an allegiance right now. But you find we want to take the statements of Ibn Taymiyyah where he only says, don't sit with Mubtada. What about this, his actions? What about his actions? You know? Or we go to extreme. How do we deal with innovators? We go to extreme. Like I said on Friday, so we make his ird, his honor is halal. You're going to talk about him and his parents and his wife and his children and his, he has defects or he's, he walks like this. La, a'udhu billah. That is not how you deal with people of mistakes. You clarify the mistake they have and that's it. He is a Muslim. He has an honor to, to be preserved. He has an honor. I'll give a, a same example, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, so people can understand this is the manhaj of the Salaf. The manhaj of the Salaf, Ikhwani, is not just a title you wear, no. The manhaj of the Salaf is not just kicking people out, no. It's to understand, and our problem, our problem, wallahi, thumma wallahi, thumma wallahi, is because of the shallow knowledge, if it's even shallow. Shallow knowledge. But if you read the lives of these people, how they dealt with other people, you'll understand. The famous story, Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says, once one of the main people of innovations, he died. Ibn Al-Qayyim, he says, the main student of Ibn Taymiyyah, 
He says, so he took me and we went to the house after that person was buried. One of the people who used to put word against Ibn Taymiyyah to the ruler so that he can be persecuted and tortured. He went and knocked Ibn Taymiyyah. After greeting them, he said, it's me, Ahmad ibn Abdul Halim ibn Taymiyyah. You are like my family now. If you need anything, I'm here to serve you. The man died who used to be his enemy. You get me? He used to be from the Ahl Bid'ah, there's no doubt. But it does not mean you include the whole family. It does not mean you're happy that, oh, that is his child, yeah, now he's an orphan, I'm happy. La, a'udhu billah. That is not Islam. That is not how you deal with people, people's mistakes, innovators. He went and knocked and said, I'm at your service now, you need anything you tell me. And that is why his famous words, his famous words, Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Ahlu Sunnah, A'lamu nas li haqq. Ahlu Sunnah, we are the people who know the truth better than anybody because we follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Wa arhamu nas li khalq. And we are supposed to be the most merciful of people to others. Especially in these times we live in, like I said, many of those brothers or sisters who you might call Ahlu Bid'ah, they don't even know what you're doing is Bid'ah. So you have the obligation to go and speak to them with wisdom and nice words. After that, if they refuse, then leave them. Leave them. And if you feel they're going to affect people, then warn against them. But just enough, just on that issue, don't listen to this person because he has this and that. But don't make him, you know, your bread and butter every day is just him. Morning, evening, after, night, you're just talking about people. Like, that is not the way of Ahl Sunnah. That is not the way of Ahl Sunnah. So this is the short reply to that question.